Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is on H. pylori infections. H. pylori is one of the most common infections that I see in my patients. Over half the, the country has it, and it's one of those infections that's really easy to spread. It can be spread via saliva, so just sharing a glass with someone or even a fork or a spoon can be an easy way to spread it, and obviously it can be spread through intimacy as well. And this infection creates lots of symptoms. We see our conventional symptoms such as gastritis, GERD, stomach burning, indigestion, ulcers. Those are our conventional symptoms. But we have more unconventional or untraditional symptoms such as brain fog, fatigue, weight gain. Uh, we also see neurological issues. We can see constipation and thyroid problems as well. With H. pylori, we'll even see fungal problems too. So, Again, there are a whole host of symptoms. Anytime we have infections in the gut, it can create inflammation systemically. H. pylori has even been found in the brains of Alzheimer's patients with neurological issues. So we know there's a lot of different factors there. And almost every patient that I see personally that's on a proton pump inhibitor and an acid blocking medication, what I find is they typically have H. pylori on average because H. pylori works through secreting specific enzymes called urease that take the nitrogen, the protein, and convert it to ammonia, and the ammonia essentially increases the pH of the stomach acid, making it more basic or more alkaline, which decreases digestion. So when our digestion is impaired, one of the first things that happens is the food we eat, it's sitting in our gut, it ferments, it putrefies, it rancidifies, and it literally rots in your gut, and organic acids form up and rise and burn your esophagus. So I find most patients that have uh, GERD or on proton pump inhibitors that they typically have an H. pylori infection. So how do we go about assessing that? Well, first things first, doing a lab test is a really great idea. I find I can catch it 80% of the time on lab work. One of the first things we can do is a blood test. And the blood tests are indirect measurements, meaning we're not actually getting a piece of the H. pylori. We're testing for certain soldiers that are specifically designed to kill H. pylori. So imagine right here, we're looking at certain antibodies here. Maybe IgA antibodies would be like the Delta Force, right? Maybe IgM would be like the Navy SEALs. And maybe IgG would be like the Army Rangers. So we know that if those guys are out there, those soldiers are out there looking for the enemy, we can assume the enemy's there. That's kind of how that works. So IgA is a specific antibody that lines the gastrointestinal tract, um, the vaginal tract, as well as the oral cavity. And it's a good sign that H. pylori is there. It's, it's a typically positive when there's an active, active infection. And same with IgM. IgM raises or increases acutely. So we know if we see IgA or IgM positive, there's definitely an H. pylori infection. Now when we see IgG elevated, it's kind of a question mark. IgG can go up and it can stay elevated as a sign that our immune system remembers it. Or it could be a sign that it's an active infection. So you have to kind of take um, take it with a grain of salt and make sure your doctor is looking at your clinical symptoms too. I typically will treat if any of these are positive. Research shows that after five or six months, IgG will drop. So if it's elevated, I would still treat. The next test is a breath test. How this works is they're giving you a specific drink, and in that drink, they're measuring CO2 coming out of the gut, out of your breath. Essentially how it works is that urease enzyme, it creates ammonia. Remember the one that made the uh, stomach acid more neutral or more alkaline, that urease enzyme also increases CO2 production. So they're giving you this, this drink and then they're measuring CO2. If CO2 goes up, they're saying it's positive breath tests. And I typically see breath tests measure an infection. It's usually an acute infection if it comes back positive. Now a lot of times though, I may see some positives on the blood test and it may not come back on the breath. So I find the blood tests tend to be a little bit more accurate than the breath test, but I do them all if I'm really suspicious of H. pylori. The next test is the stool test. And this is actually a direct test because we're actually looking for we're actually looking for the particle of H. pylori under a microscope. So we're either staining it if it's a stool antigen test, that's a stain, or if it's like a PCR, like if we're looking at pieces of DNA, that's another test we can look at, and they're both stool tests in origin. And these are considered actually the gold standard because it's the only test that we're actually looking for the infection directly. The other tests we're all looking at the H. pylori infection indirectly. So again, stool tests is, is definitely the way to go. When I'm 
concerned about an H. pylori infection with a patient, I will go through all of these lab tests, every single one. Now, typically, I have patients come in and say, oh, I've been tested for H. pylori. My, my doctor said I was fine. And I, they bring their lab work in. What I typically see is this. I see one test marker run. And most of the time, it's IgG. That's it. I have so many patients, though, that maybe only one has come back positive. Maybe it was IgA. Or maybe it was just the breath test. So you can see, looking at one marker like that, um, it's having this giant picture, right? And you only have one dot on the picture. If you only have one dot, you can't connect the other dots. So again, the more values we have, the more we can get a more complete picture of what's going on. So hope this gives you some good information on how to see if you have H. pylori. Again, with H. pylori comes other problems as well. So um, feel free, if you have any questions or you want to get yourself assessed, feel free and let me know. There's more information below the video on how to do that. Hope you enjoyed everything, and thanks, and have a great day.